They're supposed to be man's best friend, but across Ireland, heartless criminals are using dogs to savage each other to death. Dog fighting is big in this country, but it rarely makes the headlines because it operates in a secretive underworld. Of late, there have been several seizures of fighting dogs and the associated paraphernalia. In one recent Dublin raid, several DVDs of dog fighting were seized. We have one of them here, and it's not for the faint-hearted. This fight was recorded in Asia, but was found in the possession of an Irish dog fighting enthusiast. It gives us a terrifying insight into the kinds of fights taking place in this country. The bloody contest begins with both dogs being released by their handlers. They quickly become locked in a vicious hold. After a few minutes, the fight becomes even more disturbing as one dog manages to flip his opponent on his back and attacks his underside. The animal's yelps of pain can barely be heard over the cheering crowd. It's hard for us to get a handle on how prevalent dog fighting is in Ireland. It's a very secretive activity because it's highly illegal. And, but we do believe that it's quite widespread throughout the country in various forms. We've come across a number of issues uh, or a number of incidents of, uh, of dog fighting which is obviously illegal and then uh, as an ancillary to that maybe uh, dogs being kept in, in very uh, cruel or, or neglectful ways. Uh, so we've certainly taken action in, in those cases. What we do find in a lot of cases of course is that the dog fighting is one activity uh, or one criminal activity of people who are associated with broader uh, range of criminal activity. The type of people involved in dog fighting are usually vicious criminals who use this blood sport to enhance their status. Dogs, and particularly the more say vicious breeds of dogs, uh, uh, you know, seem to have this association with criminals, or maybe the other way around. The criminals have associations with these tough breeds of dogs, and they're the ones invariably that are used uh, in dog fighting and so on. This footage was recorded by the ISPCA during a recent raid on a dogfight. Garthi and animal welfare officers broke up the bloody contest, which was taking place in a shed. Eight fighting dogs were seized. One successful raid we had a number of years ago, there was a large shed with a, a, a pit in the shed constructed of corrugated iron with wooden posts in the corners. Now this is something that could be put together within probably half an hour, an hour, and disassembled again and removed. A lot of smaller animals were found during this raid. These may have been used to bait the dogs, to give them a taste for blood. The ones that are trained for fighting, they're trained uh, with other animals, like what we call bait animals. Uh, they would get another dog, a small dog for instance, they would tape his muzzle up and they'd throw him into a fight. You know, he'd get savaged, but their dog, being a prize dog, wouldn't get injured at all. Yeah. But yet they get the thing of killing and the whole lot. They'd use rabbits, um, cats and small dogs. Uh, occasionally they would use the large dog, but mainly small dogs, Jack Russells, Poodles, something like that line, because uh, they wouldn't much of fighting them. And literally within minutes they'd be ripped to pieces. Training is a vital part of dog fighting. These pit bulls aren't always born vicious. They're made that way through years of cruel and violent conditioning. This specially modified treadmill was recently seized during a raid in Dublin. Fighting pit bulls will never be walked in public. They have to get their exercise in enclosed conditions. There's videotapes of dogs being trained and there's all sorts of techniques that are used. The most common is, is the dog treadmill, which can be put at an angle as well to force the dog to, to run uphill and therefore increase the, the, the strength of the upper body. Because dog fighting is illegal, owners can't bring their injured pit bulls to a mainstream vet. They would risk being reported to the authorities. Trainers will frequently carry out their own crude surgeries and procedures. Any reputable vet isn't going to treat these sort of animals without passing on the details to the relevant authorities. So these guys do do their own DIY veterinary. I mean, they'll use staples quite commonly. Uh, they'll have drips and, and uh, antibiotics and that sort of thing, which they'll treat the dogs with themselves in, a, in an effort to heal them. These photographs show the injuries on fighting dogs recently seized in Dublin. 
you can see old wounds that have been treated using crude staples. During the same raid, dogs were found chained up in small cages and a host of medication and veterinary equipment was also seized. Animal welfare groups in Ireland frequently seize fighting dogs and the associated equipment, but it's very difficult to get convictions because of problems with the law. It's actually not illegal to be a spectator. It's not illegal to possess uh, fighting dogs. It's not illegal to possess uh, dog fighting paraphernalia. Uh, the only thing you can actually prosecute someone for is actually caught in the act of dog fighting or, for instance, someone actually handling the money because they could be done for assisting in the fighting of an abating animal. Um, but anyone else then, there's nothing that can be done to them. They can assist, they can actually go and look at a dog fight. Um, they can actually spectate. As long as they don't own the dogs or force dogs to fight, there's nothing can be done to those people. I won't say there's ample law, but there are a range of different laws because once you get to uh, something like, like dog fighting, first of all, there's the, 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 the activity itself. There may well be cruelty and neglect to animals. There may well be, in a lot of, a lot of cases, illegal betting going on on the side. Uh, there may well be uh, uh, some level of public order or disorder, if you like. So there's a range of other... Uh, uh, laws, if you like, that can be used as well, depending on the situation that you find yourself in. But I mean, any law that comes along that tightens up the position for, for us as the police force would certainly welcome it. So there was a number of convictions a few years ago for a number of people who were attended a dog fight, and it was decided by the jury that they were there by mutual design. They were there for the purpose of organising a dog fight. Now, a number of these people appealed this uh, conviction, and their uh, convictions were subsequently quashed. So this sets a precedent that merely being in attendance at a fight is not a crime in Ireland at, at present. Now this is obviously not acceptable in this day and age and we have a new legislation coming in in hopefully the near future which should uh, close this loophole. Dog fighting isn't just a vicious blood sport, it's also about money. Champion dogs are worth tens of thousands of euro. Massive amounts of cash are also gambled on the fights. Well, you can up to 50,000 euro for a fight. Some fights last for an hour, two hours, until either one dog either dies, uh, collapse from exhaustion, dehydration, or through injury. Or very rarely the owners will, you know, throw the towel in and say, look, it's over. Uh, those dogs, unfortunately, that do lose, um, usually for them, it's usually death. Um, either they get the dog a blow across the head or electrocution. The dogs themselves are very valuable. I mean, they're given different classes of, of champions um, based on how successful they've been. And a, a very successful dog will be worth a lot of money. Uh, obviously, the pups from these dogs are also worth a significant amount of money. And then there's also money involved with the fights themselves. I mean, there'll probably be a main bet on between the two owners of the dogs over the, the outcome of the fight. But then the other people attending will be having substantial side bets as well. Dog fights are highly organized. There are even referees and weight divisions it's almost like boxing. I mean, these fights can be agreed upon months in advance. They also agree upon a weight that the dogs are going to have to fight at. So the dogs are then trained to that weight. And then they'll be weighed before the fight to ensure that they come under it. And only then will the fight go ahead. There's a referee involved. I mean, and then there's rounds, in effect, called scratches. What happens is that the referee calls a start to the fight. The two dogs run at each other. What will normally happen then is that they get caught in some sort of clinch. And uh, this will go on for a little while, and then the referee will decide to break it up. The dogs will be brought back to their corners, they're sponged down, and then they're released again from behind their scratch lines. And this will go on for some period of time, depending on how equally matched the dogs are. Coming up next, we'll show you the outcome of this vicious dog fight, and we take a shocking look at what happens when fighting dogs break free from captivity. Dog fighting is also on the rise in Ireland. The authorities frequently seize pit bulls, dog fighting equipment and DVDs, but it's difficult to convict those involved because of problems with the law. This fight that we showed you earlier is nearing an end. Both dogs are too exhausted and badly injured to continue, but that doesn't stop their owners trying to keep the carnage going. A dog doesn't always die in the ring, but oftentimes the loser will have to be put down or will die from its injuries at a later time. It's a common misperception that every, in every fight a dog dies in the pit, but quite often dogs who've been involved in a fight will die afterwards through shock and stress and through a loss of body fluids and just overall run down from the efforts of the fight. Even when animal welfare groups manage to rescue fighting dogs, 
they are left with very few options. Even if you were to, you know, to, to, to get them right and fix them back again, the chance of be home were slim. Because they've been fighting, they've been used for fighting, they, it's in their blood, it's in them now. So you couldn't take a risk with any other animal or any child going near them. So unfortunately they're euthanized, even if we got a healthy one from a dog fight, it would still be euthanized. There's no point in keeping a dog if that's going to be a liability to children or to other animals. It can be very sad to see a dog afterwards. There was one picked up of, within the last few months that was so traumatized that it, it really didn't move for a few days afterwards. I transported it at one point and I put it into the kennel in my van. And when I stopped uh, at the destination, the dog wasn't moving. I thought it was dead in the kennel. It just literally had it back to me and would not respond to anything. And this was pure stress from uh, the fight I'd been involved in. The vicious nature of fighting dogs has been highlighted in the past when they have escaped and attacked other animals and even members of the public. In January 2007, a 13-year-old girl was mauled by a pit bull terrier in Finglas in Dublin. Louise Kelly required surgery after the unmuzzled dog broke free from its leash, locked its jaws into her leg and dragged her several feet along the road. Her calf muscle suffered extensive damage during the attack and she needed a dozen stitches. He was dragging along the ground. Uh, he pulled our trousers clean off. Our trousers were written from the bottom of her ankle to her hip. I heard her scream. So I went around, she was hysterical. In a recent incident in Galway, Gardaí were the victims of a pit bull attack. Three men have been arrested after a Garda was savaged by dogs while searching a house in Galway for drugs. A 40-year-old Garda needed 100 stitches at University College Hospital after he was attacked by two pit bull terriers and another dog while searching the house on Thursday night. One of the most high-profile dog attacks in recent years happened in the UK in 2007 when a five-year-old girl was savaged to death by a pit bull. The family and friends of five-year-old Ellie were today coming to terms with the horrific circumstances of her death after she was mauled by her uncle's pit bull terrier type dog. Pit bulls also attack other dogs when they break free from captivity. These photographs were taken of a small dog recently attacked in Dublin. The dog was torn apart by this pit bull terrier both animals had to be put down. Pit bulls are vicious and will take on any dog, no matter how big. This boxer was recently attacked and left with serious injuries. These dogs now, you know, they're not very good for society, especially fighting dogs. If one of those dogs, for instance, got loose, the damage that it could do, uh, not only to animals, but I mean, you saw a small child. A small child would be the same stature as a dog bending down to them it's just something small like a dog it could run attack and kill if necessary a number of years ago we came across an eight week old pit bull terrier puppy that was being sold at a, a dog fight now this dog had been bred for fighting and although we got it at such a young age and reared it the way dogs would normally be reared as it got older it just got increasingly unpredictable increasingly aggressive and eventually the animal had to unfortunately be put to sleep In December 2007, American sports fans were shocked as one of their heroes became embroiled in controversy. Former Atlanta Falcons quarterback Michael Vick was sentenced to three months in prison for his part in a dogfighting ring. Dogfighting in Northern Ireland has been highlighted in recent years, but it's claimed that many of the dogs destined for the North are being brought in through the Republic because of our lax laws. See, it's very big in the south. What happens is because they're banned in, in Northern Ireland, the majority of dogs that come in from abroad, they come in to the south of Ireland, to dresses in the south, and then they're shipped to the border. Because with no border checks, they just sail straight through. This CCTV footage from a Belfast shop shows just how vicious pit bulls can be. This woman has run into the news agents to try to escape from a terrier who began mauling her Bichon freeze dog while she was out walking. She tries to take refuge in a storeroom. But as she attempts to pull her pet out of harm's way, the pit bull locks its jaws onto the defenseless dog as horrified shoppers look on. 
Eventually, one man takes action and hits the dog repeatedly with a plastic sign. The terrier still refuses to let go. Finally, he opens his powerful jaws and releases the terrified dog. The owner manages to close the door of the storeroom and the attack is over. Fortunately, the Bichon Freeze survived the violent ordeal. The pit bull was captured and taken away by animal welfare officers. Fighting dogs are not outlawed in Ireland. Individual city and county councils have introduced bans on potentially dangerous breeds, but these laws have been criticised. Liam McGuinness lives in the Oliver Bond Council Flat Estate in Dublin city centre with his dog Jess. But Jess is a Staffordshire Bull Terrier, one of ten breeds banned from Dublin city council estates since the start of this month. No, I'm not going to give Jess up now, even if I have to go to court. It's me right to have a pet. Shane the German Shepherd is on Dublin City Council's new list of banned dogs and today he joined dozens of protesters at the council's offices. Innocent dogs are now handed into pounds and vets, they'll be destroyed um, and innocent dog owners will, will come forward with their dogs and the problem dogs will still be there because the irresponsible dog owners will not surrender their dogs. While bans on dangerous dogs may help protect members of the public, it won't stop the rise of dog fighting in Ireland. It's a cruel blood sport dominated by criminals. And they will, I suppose, a lot of people in the criminal fraternity have a notion that they're, they're very interested in dogs and animals. And we know from the instance that we've come across, you know, that the dog's welfare is, is the last thing on their mind.